Okay, and I'm back. I've got one more minute to go, but if you have a big plate, and this is a, a ginormous plate, it's easier to flip your cakes onto a plate and then allow them to fully cool. I don't recommend putting them right away on a cake stand because you need them to cool down before you put heat on a cake stand. So this is looking pretty good. They're still quite hot. So I'm gonna show you, I have 35 seconds left to go. And you do wanna use pot holders because uh, the pans are still, are still pretty warm. You can push them slowly with your fingers, but I don't recommend doing that. Well, let's see if this will come out easy or if we're going to have problems with this. And we're going to be easy. This is one reason why you want to fully grease your cookie sheet. And the parchment paper is on top. So you're just going to allow that to uh, cool down. And it's just as as easy as that. Now, now what you can do, let's see how easy this one will come out. And I think I'm going to do this on a different plate because you really need to have a plate underneath the cake when you flip it out. Otherwise, what happens is, is it, can go, it can actually break on you and you don't want that, especially if you're doing a cake for a party. You want to have a pretty looking cake. And this one should just do the same thing. Just flips out. And that's how you get your cakes out of the pan. Now, allow them to fully cool. You do not want to take your parchment paper off right at this step. You also don't want to do anything with the cakes. You just want to allow them to fully cool now. And it usually takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes for them to fully cool enough to where you can start to think about frosting them. In the meantime, depending on what you're doing frosting-wise, if you're doing a really complicated frosting that takes a long time to make, you might want to go ahead and slowly start doing that. A lot of times you got to let your chocolate, especially if you're doing a, a, a chocolate cake, you need to let that come to, to a room temperature. But you can always leave your cakes for several hours to fully cool, then do your frosting. Your cakes are not going to go anywhere. And we're going to just do an easy chocolate buttercream frosting. But like I said, we're going to put a layer of raspberry jelly on these cakes. And you're going to do it pretty much the same way that you did it with the jelly roll. You're just going to do a layer of the raspberry jelly in the middle. And then you're going to put your buttercream on top of that. So what I usually do is one cake, I'll do the buttercream center. And on the other cake, I'll do the raspberry. And then when you put them together, that becomes your, your uh, buttercream. Now, you might notice that these do not look even. And if you look at it head on, it's kind of hard to, to see. But you can see that there's sort of like a dome shape. You can buy certain products that will alleviate you having a dome shaped cake. The best thing to do is allow them to fully cool and then with a bread knife, you can go straight across and get rid of that dome so that your cakes do sit flat. That never bothered me. If I'm, if I'm doing a formal dessert, then I would do that. But since it's just me and, and my husband right now, you don't really need to get that fancy. But if you're doing it for a party or if you're having guests over, you just want to ease, even the, the uh, top layer of your cake and make it even. You want to do the same thing with the bottom if there's any any bump bumps. And usually I like to uh, 
keep one layer of the parchment paper as the top of the cake because most of the most of the um, dome is towards the bottom of the cake. Now, there are other things that you can do to alleviate that. There, you could put when it's baking. You could try to put a little aluminum foil on top. You do run the risk of your cake not getting fully done or taking even longer to bake. I have personally never found a foolproof method to keep your cake from rising to the top. I know um, some of the cake pans do have a, um, not a wire mesh, but they have a wire ring that goes across that kind of keeps the cake layers down. It's really personal preference on what you want to do. But these are going to look really nice once we frost them. Now, I'm not doing anything fancy when it comes to the frosting. I'm not putting it in a piping bag. I'm not putting flowers on the cake. And I'm not doing a decorative cake tonight. We're just doing a basic chocolate cake. So, come back later and I'll show you how we do our frosting and how we frost these cakes. Okay, everybody, I'm back. Sorry, I had to take care of a few things. I had to wash my cake stand. My two cakes have been cooling for over an hour now, and they are cool enough now uh, to frost. So what I'm going to do, my husband's outside lighting the grill. Did you open the bottom? You didn't open the bottom. My husband's lighting up the grill. First thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some chocolate. Now, I use the baker's chocolate. You can use the semi-sweet, the unsweet, or the, you can use the unsweet, bittersweet, bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate, and you want to chop it. We're going to use the semi-sweet. That's just going to give more of a sweeter flavor to the frosting. You know, I'll be, I need to stop the video for a second. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm sorry about that. My husband has a hard time lighting up the grill when he does, does things. Put it in a recycle bowl. So I got our semi-chocolate over here, and unfortunately, I'm going to have to angle you guys. You're not going to get a good view of this, but... This is what they call baker's chocolate, and that's what you want to use for your frosting. You can also use them for baking your cakes if you don't have uh, uh, cocoa powder. And you want to be careful with this. You want to be very careful with this around dogs, and you want to especially be careful with this around people. This is not a chocolate that you really want to eat like you do a candy bar. This is not that type of chocolate. So we need about three ounces. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take away about four of these bars. And I'm just gonna put those off to the side because you're not gonna need those. Now to chop chocolate like this, you just need to to sort of coarsely choppy. It doesn't need to be, it doesn't need to be, be like finely broken up or anything. You just want to kind of coarsely chop it. And you want to be very careful with this kind of chocolate, especially if you have dogs. Uh, you don't want to risk dropping this chocolate on the ground because this will harm your four-legged creatures because it is chocolate. So what we're going to do is we're just going to break this. I learned the hard way. I tried tried this chocolate when I was a kid, thinking it was going to be, oh, it's going to be nice and sweet. Well, this is not the eating chocolate. Now, 
Now, one thing people may not know about me is I am not a big fan of chocolate cake. Uh, my husband, however, is. I'm more, I like the white or the vanilla cakes versus the chocolate cakes. And I'm not a huge uh, cake person. I'll eat it once in a blue moon, but it's not my go-to. And I think it's because when I was growing up, my grandmother used to make these wonderful cakes. And I, my cakes don't, um, well, they compare with hers. But I don't have all of her recipes anymore for her cakes. So we're just going to put that off to the side. And you want to make sure that your counter is nice and clean um, so that you don't get ants in it. Especially if you live in a uh, dry climate. And of course you don't want ants if you live in cold climate either. So with this other chocolate, what you want to do is wrap it up very well. And um, what I like to do is put it in a, a Ziploc bag. And it'll, it'll stay until you you want. Now, chocolate can go bad, especially baking chocolate. Bake, baker's chocolate has a much shorter lifespan than um, other chocolates. Now, if you don't have baking cho chocolate, the next best thing would be uh, like chocolate chips. Now, you can do this in one of two ways. You can you, you can put this in the microwave to melt, or you can do it on the stovetop with water. We're going to do it in the microwave using the medium power or over melt heat proof bowl or measuring cup using the medium power setting on your microwave or over simmering water melt the chocolate about three quarters of the way okay so we're going to use the medium setting and we're only going to melt it three quarters of the way so what we're going to do is uh we're going to do oh cancel we're going to melt select melt food okay Type one for butter, two cream, three, three chocolate. Okay, so we're gonna do three. Okay. So we're gonna melt four ounces. So that's a little less than four ounces. That's actually only three ounces of chocolate. My grill in the background, and I'm gonna. Try Turn you, you can see the flame coming out of my grill over, well, <laughs> it's actually coming out of this window, but you can see the, the flame for the grill. We're having pork chops tonight, and I don't need to, to tell you guys how to do, um, oh, stir food. Well, I don't know why I'm stirring this. This isn't even melted. Okay. Oh, and I have a feeling it needs to go a lot longer than that, but we'll see. So once your chocolate is all melted, we're going to remove it. We're going to stir it till it's smooth, and then we're going to remove move it and allow it to cool to room temperature. That doesn't take all that long. It takes about 10 minutes for the chocolate to come to room temperature. And it helps if you have a small... And I bet my husband has it downstairs. But if you have a small whisk, you can whisk it. Um, like I said, I think he has it downstairs. Ouch. Hi, please. So what we're going to do is we're going to whisk it smooth once it beeps. And it's got 12 seconds. Sometimes it needs to go longer than what the microwave has. Um, so in a large bowl, what we're going to do is we're going to beat together the butter and salt until it's fluffy. And about a half of the confectionery sugar. Well, let's check our, yeah, and then you can tell 
The chocolate is not melted, but what you're going to do is you're just going to stir it till it's smooth. And actually that is pretty smooth. <coughs> And it shouldn't take too, too long for this to, to actually <coughs> to actually smooth, smooth and cool down. This should only take a, maybe about five minutes. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to start doing our other frosting. I'm going to stop the video for a quick second and I'll be right back.